Okay, so let me ask you a question. Suppose that you uh, ask your calculator or some computer software to calculate the zero of a complicated function, say a degree 10 polynomial, or something involving exponentials and logarithms. How do you think your calculator uh, find the root? If it's a quadratic polynomial, there's a nice formula, so it can just calculate it. For a cubic polynomial, there's a super messy, complicated formula, but it can still calculate it. For, for, for a degree 10 polynomial, there is no formula. So there's no way it can calculate it just by applying a formula. How do you think it find the root? Well, that's not so easy. In fact, uh, we've seen one method to do that already, just very briefly, which was called the bisection method. What it was was really just a repeated application of intermediate value theorem. Now that worked, and that's always going to work, but it's, it's computationally very uh, not efficient because it requires many, many steps to get any kind of precise answer. There's a much faster way of getting the roots. It's really cool. It's called Newton's method, and it's a direct application of linear approximations. So this, this is what we'll study in this video. So here's how it, how it goes. So the idea is, suppose you want to find a zero of some function. So here I've just uh, chosen a function. So I have a nice app here, which gives me uh, the graph of a function. So I've just chosen a random function, e to the x plus x squared minus 4. If you try to find a zero of that function explicitly, you won't be able to. You can't solve for x uh, for the zero of this function here. So you need to find it numerically. Now, the idea of Newton's method is to first guess an answer, so either sketch the graph or use intermediate value theorem or whatever to guess something that is close to the zero of the function. So in this case, for example, I guess 0 0.5. That's not a very good guess, but, you know, it's close enough. And the idea is that while it's hard to find the zero of the function, if you replace the function by its linear approximation, so by the tangent line at this point, then it's very easy to find the zero of the tangent line. That's just a tangent line, so you're just trying to find the intercept of the tangent line with the x-axis. So that's very easy. So this is exactly what we're going to do as a first step. So we just draw the tangent line at the point x equals 0 0.5 and then calculate the intercept of the tangent line with the x-axis. Let, let me zoom in here. So we get the intercept here, which is going to be between 1 and 1 1.5 in this case. All right, so what we're trying to do here explicitly is the following. So first step was pick a guess, x equals x1 for our root which is not a root of f of x, but it's close enough. And then the next step is to uh, find or calculate the intercept, not of f of x, but of the linearization or linear approximation of f of x at our point x equals to x1. So recall from the previous videos that the linear or linearization of the function here is going to be equal to f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times x minus x1. So if I want to find its intercept or its zero, all I'm trying to do is set that to zero and then solve for x. I'm going to call the new zero that we find here, the zero of the, the intercept of the linearization, I'm going to call it x2. So this is the solution of this equation for x. Now I'll spare you the details, but you can solve for x here, and what you'll get is that the solution is equal to x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. And this gives you a new x-coordinate, which is the intercept of the linearization of the function at x equals to x1. So if I go back to my little app here, this would be the point here. But now I can repeat the process. So I can say, now let's take this point, look at the point in the function where at this, the, the value of the function at this point. So I get something like this. And then, then I replace the function at this point by its linearization and find the intercept of the line here. Now you see it's getting much, much closer to the actual value of the zero of the function. So if I zoom in, it's not quite the same yet, but it's getting very close. So this is the next step. So specifically what I'm doing now is the exact same thing, but for the point x2. So I now find the intercept of the linearization of my function f of x, but at the new point here, x equals to x2. Now, following the exact same step as I had here, I'll get that the solution, or the intercept of this linearization, which I will call x3, is equal to the exact same thing here, but replacing x1 by x2, because now I'm talking about the linearization at x2. All right, so all I have to do here is plug in the numbers, and I'll get a number for the new uh, point x3 which was here in this case something between 1 and 1.1. And now I can keep going 
So I'm just now looking at the value of the function at this point, replacing the function by its linearization, finding the intercept. You see now it's getting very, very close. can zoom in as much as I'd like. And uh, even if I keep zooming in, it, I don't even see a difference really, almost. Yeah, there is a little difference here to know I find in the actual zero of the function, but it's getting very close. And then I can keep going the number of times I want to reach any kind of uh, precision that I'm interested in. Now you see if I keep going here, the number is not changing anymore. Uh, that's because the root here is not changing. That's because I've reached precision for all the number of decimal places that are shown here. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the slides and let me try to summarize what is the idea of Newton's method. And now we do the exact same calculation for the function in my little applet uh, in a more streamlined way. So the idea of Newton's method is very simple. You start by picking a point, x1, that is close enough to the root of f of x so that uh, uh, it will work. So uh, you could do that by first graphing the function or using intermediate value theorem to guess an answer. Now what you do is find the intercept which I'm going to call x2, of the linear approximation of the function at x1. This is easy to do. That's just finding the intercept of the line. And you end up with this formula that we just got. Now you repeat the process, but now at the point x2. So you look at the linearization of the function at x2. Find the intercept. You get x3. Then you keep repeating as many times as you'd like. At each step, you'll get that the new uh, intercept xn plus 1 will be equal to x to the n, the previous one, minus the value of the function at this point, divided by the value of the uh, derivative at this point. And you keep going until you reach the precision you want. So roughly speaking, what this means is that suppose you want to have a number uh, valued up to three decimal places. So if it happens that in two successive steps, the zeros that you get xn and xn plus 1 have the exact same first three decimals, that means you can stop because you know that every other zero afterwards will have the same three first decimals. So you found the answer up to three decimal places. Okay, so let me do this example again. So now I have my uh, function e to the x plus x squared minus 4, and I'm going to choose, first step is to pick starting point. So as we did before, I'm going to choose my starting point to be x equals 0 0.5. So not a bad starting point. And then first step here will be to calculate x2. So this will be, so this is x1, sorry, so this will be x2 is equal to x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. So this is the intercept of the linearization of my function at x1. So here to do that, I need to calculate the derivative function. That's the only thing really I need to calculate. So my derivative here is e to the x plus 2x. And I just evaluate everything at my point x1. So I get here 0 0.5 minus the value of the function at 0.5, so that's e to the 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 squared minus 4 divided by the value of the derivative at 0 0.5. I get something like that. Okay, so I could plug that in some calculator. That's exactly what my app will, be, will do for me. So now I'm going back to step 1. Let me zoom out. <clears throat> and then I get this number here, which uh, it's calculated to be something like 1.29332. Okay, suppose I want to find the answer up to three decimal places. Second step, I'll calculate x3 as being x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. And then all I have to do is replace x2 here by 1.29. I'll get some stuff here, which I can plug in a computer calculate, this is the second step, what I get is the answer, something like 1.08188, and so on. Okay, now the first three decimals are different, so I need to keep going. So I'm going to write down x4 here, I'll spare you all the details, but it's just the same calculation now, but replacing uh, the x coordinate by x3, which is 1.08, blah, blah, blah. Should be approximately equal. So if I calculate that using my applet, get now a new number, which is 1.05828, so on. Still not the first same, same first three decimals, so I need to keep going. x5, according to the applet, will be 1.05800, and so on. And now you see that the first three decimals are the same. So both x4 and x5 have the same first three decimals. So I can conclude that 1.058 is a root 
of f of x uh, up to precision of three decimal places. All right, so that was pretty cool. You see it converged pretty quickly. I only needed, only needed four steps here. And if I had chosen my starting point to be closer to the actual root, that would have been even faster. So Newton's method is very, very efficient. It's a very fast way of calculating roots, and it's also pretty cool. But the one thing with Newton's method, though, is that it does not always work. So for some kind of crazy function, sometimes it will not work. Or if you pick your starting point in a weird way, in a bad way, it will also not work. So you have to be very careful. So let me just end this video with a simple example of things that do not work. I'm not going to explain why and leave that as a question that you can uh, think about before we uh, talk about it in class. So suppose I look at the function x minus 2 minus log of x. Now clearly I see there's a zero somewhere here, so I could try to find it Newton, using Newton's method. I could say, well, this is pretty close to 0 0.5. So let me start with a equals 0 0.5. So this is my starting point. Now I'm going to replace the equation by linearization, find the intercept of linearization. I end up with something like that. The intercept is here. Okay, now I could try to repeat the process. Now you see it gives me an AN, which means basically fail. Well, doesn't work. What's going on? Why is that not working? Think about it. We'll come back to this example in class. But let me give you one more case where it wouldn't work. The same function. And now instead of choosing 0.5 as my starting point, suppose I choose 1 as my, my starting point. Again, I'll uh, look at the function value at 1, then write down the tangent line and uh, find the intercept. I get something like that. And then I could keep repeating the process, and I just get the exact same thing again. Nothing's going on. I'm not converging towards the root at all. Why? What's going on? Well, think about it, and we'll come back to these pathological cases in class.